Hello gentlemen, we're going to look at the next part of the work of, of relating to the uh, GAAP it's called Income Received in Advance and Accrued Income we're on page 327 of your textbook so Income Received in Advance is when you receive income in the current financial year that is only yours in the next financial year so in if you apply the matching concept, which is the GAA principle, so any income received in the future period must be included from the current financial period because only income and expenses, expenditures for the current financial period must be put together. So th you do an adjustment in the general journal, the relevant in income account will decrease. So income initially increases owner's equity on the credit side but if the income is decreasing it must be debited if you debit there's a credit so the new credit is an account called income received in advance if something is credit you must the lights must start coming on that it is a liability because i have received the income but i still need to deliver the service or give the money back to that Person. So I owe that to someone, so therefore it is a liability. So look at the example. You rent the storeroom. So the rent was received an amount 7,800, including here with the rent for March 2018. So I said in the previous video, so now they give you 7,800 for 13 months. So you must now calculate how much was the rent for one month. It's 600. If you divide 7,800 by 13, you get 600. 600 rand was therefore received for the next financial year, so it must be subtracted from the current rent income. So rent income, which has a credit balance because it's the income, they must be debited, must be decreased. So the credit then is income received in advance. So the total rent income for the current financial year is what you, what is. Even though they rece received 7,800, only 7,200. So you can, again, you can double check this. So if they say you your rental amount, they don't say it here, but they do. Sometimes they say it was 600 per month. You multiply 600 by 12, and you see, okay, it's 7,200. So crude income is where you have delivered a service, or you've earned income, but no one, they have not paid you it. So well, you can receive money, so your bank can increase, but you haven't received an income yet. Yeah, you've you've delivered the income, or you've earned the income, but no one has paid you yet. So matching again. So even though you have received no money, um, that's irrelevant here because we were we're talking about income, not receipts. So receipt is when you receive money in your bank account. Payment is when you pay money from your bank account. Income is when you earn an income, and an expense is then the, is then the same. So you get an adjust. You must do the adjustment in the GJ. The relevant income amount will increase because even though you've not received the money, you actually still earn that income. So income increases on the credit side, uh, and then there must be a debit. A new account called accrued income is debited. So this is the reversal of the income received in advance so um, in the sense that now it is an asset because they owe you the money so you've received you've earned the income but they still need to pay you so it's owed to you so it's an asset so look here the big the business the fixed deposit of 10,000 rand the interest rates 15 percent the interest rate for the year therefore should be 1,500, but on the trial balance, you've only received 1,125, and this, this, an amount of 375 is still receivable. So you the adjustment. So that 375 has already been earned, it's an income, but it's not received, so therefore it must be added to the income, interest, and fixed deposit on the credit side, because you're increasing the income, and then the debit is 375 in the accrued income account, because they owe you that. So the total interest, as you can see above, it was it should have been a thousand five hundred. Now it is a thousand five hundred because one one two five you actually have received, and three seven five is the income 
must in it must increase the income. So we're going to look at an example quickly. So here is the pre-adjustment trial balance on the last day of the year. We're going to do the adjustments now. So you've got a fixed deposit at XY Bank. Always remember you can have fixed deposit at more than one bank. So therefore you must say XY Bank or FNB Bank or Capitec, whatever may be the case. Uh, rental income for the year, interest on fixed deposit for the year. Now we must adjust these uh, accounts as per the GAA principles because you must be prudent and you must have up-to-date information and it's very important that you have accurate information in the financial world. So the tenant has already paid the rent for the for March 2016, 1300. So our financial year ends on 29 February 2016. So if you draw a timeline, you'll clearly see that the March is in the next year. So interest on fixed deposit received for nine months only. The interest for the last quarter is over, owing 375. It's important that you know that there are four quarters in a year. So again, they, they give you the amount here, but you must be able to calculate it based on the information that they will give you. So they'll, they'll give you the the amount that's in the fixed deposit. Here is 10,000. They give you the interest rate. So you can work that out. Um, it should be 1,500, but it's only 1,125. So you can work out the difference. Here they give you the difference. So in the general journal, remember this thing that goes first is the thing being debited. So rent income must decrease. It's an income. It's normally on the credit side, but we're putting on the debit side to decrease it. In the credit, this income received in advance, which is a liability because I owe that to the person that has paid me. No adjustment. The accrued income. The easiest way is to think about this. The interest on fixed deposit is an income that I have earned but not received it. So it goes on the credit side. Then accrued income is a asset because XY Bank owes me that, 375, it's an asset. Now if we go to the general ledger, the balance is on the credit side, because they're both incomes. Okay, so rent income decreases on the debit side. Then the contract count is income received in advance, which is liability. Interest on fixed deposit. Must increase on the credit side by that 375, but that will owe to me. So accrued income goes to the debit side, or on the debit side of accrued income, 375, that is an asset. So my actual rent income that I take to profit and loss for the year is 15600. Well, interest on fixed deposit is 1500, which is more, because even though I've only received 1025, my actual income from interest on fixed deposit is. 1500 so if you look at the accounting equation rent income is an income that is that is decreasing so an income normally increases owner's equity if an income decreases it decreases owner's equity so it's a liability because I still owe them that income so you'll see remember because it's I've received an advance so it is still owed to the other person okay Create a, we create an asset, accrued income, so we are owed that. Then interest on fixed deposit is an income income account that is increased. Income account that increased also increases on its equity. So make sure you understand the effect on the accounting equation. Thank you, gentlemen.